All right, this is Charlie with Extreme Gear Reviews. About two weeks ago, I drove over to Charbonneau Guitars just outside of Montreal, Quebec, Canada to pick up my very own custom Simtar six-string beast of an axe. You can check out the video right here. And while I was there, I had an opportunity to chat with Pierre Charbonneau, the owner and operator of Charbonneau Guitars. He gave me a little tour of his shop and shared with me some of his philosophies on guitar building. So, get yourself geared up and locked in for another episode of Extreme Gear Reviews. This is an exclusive interview with Pierre Charbonneau, owner and master builder of Charbonneau Guitars. <laughs> Well, again, sorry Don't for that little mess, but uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a wood shop, so there's a lot of <laughs> dust here. Oh, uh, so yeah, this is the <laughs> typical bandsaw I use with a really large blade for cutting uh, slicing tops. Uh, and I mostly use this, uh, my bandsaw for a contouring, uh, roughly contouring my, uh, my guitar bodies and necks. Here's a big uh, pin router. This is a really intimidating, uh, intimidating uh, piece of uh, equipment, but it does the, the work quite fast and it's quite something. <laughs> That's yeah. a really big bit. You got to be really careful working with that. Here's my uh, simple jig for a neck shaping, where I shake the, the rough uh, shape uh, of the back of the necks. I do that on that jig. And uh, here, well, sorry for that. I uh, moved my stuff a little. Everything's on wheels, though. I can move everything. That's great. Here I have my press, press drill with uh, my belt sander, which is attached to the same uh, rolling kind of uh, cable. And uh, yeah, I do a lot of work on that. And here's uh, my belt sander and radius sander for fretboards. So uh, really uh, good machines and uh, uh, to, uh, to work with and that makes the job faster. Absolutely. Here's my big drum sander. Sorry, it's hard to see maybe, but this is really, really useful because it helps prevent chipping from the tops that has a lot of grain, gotcha. a, a lot of wavy grains, because at the last pass, if you use the planer, you're gonna, you're gonna screw up the top. So I use this. Awesome, man. Holy crap. Here's a press. When I press some veneers on some bodies, I uh, I put it in the press here. It's a steering press, steering wheel press. It's uh, it helps a lot for the yeah, yeah. You have full control. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and here is my uh, one and another part of my bench. With us, I have uh, here. I have my uh, my vise, which I shape some necks to shape the volute of some necks. Do some radius on the fretboards. This is a nice neck. What do you got going on over here? Oh, it's a uh, it's a bird's eye maple fretboard here, and it's uh, a neck that is pretty rough actually, but it's meant to be like that when the uh, when it's in the the building process, and awesome. it's got uh, some uh, nice figured birch, tiger wood, and a uh, black walnut stripe here in the middle. That's amazing. Yep. So do clients um, like do all of them like me pick their woods out, or do you help them based on like what? What they're looking for it depends on the customer some customers know exactly what they want and some others you know they have a general idea but they want some help because gotcha. that's what they're seeking for when they go to a company which is like a custom you know the, the custom made instrument i have my own models for sure but i can tweak some design that i have or i can build a brand new design yeah depending on what the customer wants but uh yeah but mostly yeah anything you would want on your guitar you can have it truly custom you yeah you want a snake foot fingerboard uh you want a black limba neck or a, he a rosewood neck a heavenly neck uh, a mix of both uh multi-laminated necks uh a lot of uh, wood uh, wood tops choices. I got a it's a little bit mixed here, but I got a lot of uh, you know I got a couple of tops here. Some pieces of wood ready to cut. Some black crazy black limba here. That's nice. Some wenge. Some spalted. Uh, yeah, out here I have a really nice piece of spalted flame spalted maple. Oh, it's it's, uh, it's really crazy. And so all these woods, a lot of them are sourced here in Quebec or? Some of them. I will more likely say 60% of my wood is local. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I try to use, uh, you know, all the torrified ash, the uh, regular ash uh, for bodies, um, uh, the birch, flame birch, uh, some uh, art rock uh, maple and some uh, eastern flame maple. It's all coming from Quebec. That's great. 
Um, and for sure, the exotic woods don't come from Quebec. Yeah. But uh, I try to uh, buy them from local companies, though. That's awesome, man. That's uh, awesome. Most of most of it is about here in Quebec, anyway. So you want to show me? Are, are you allowed to show me what's uh, being worked on over here? Oh sure, yeah. yeah Here's uh, well, this uh, burl top I glued Damn. yesterday for a build that I'm gonna glue on the on the body. <laughs> That's fucking beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice, and it's even nicer when it's wet because when you wet it with like uh, nafta, you can you can have a, uh, the big picture of what's gonna look yeah. like when there's the finish on it. True. So. And here's uh, it's it's really in the uh, in a rough stages as you can see there's glue and yeah, stuff but yeah. it, that's like that when you build a guitar so this is like a star crusher model Love the it. flame maple top black bindings beautiful poplar body but it's gonna all gonna be uh, stained black with a, a like a, a burnt orange color oh here. that's so gonna be beautiful. Love, your, love the Star Crusher model. Yeah. It's such a cool shape. It is super rough, but it's going to be a, a send blasted guitar. Cool. It's all going to be like the, the hash as it is. Well, it's all rough. It's not sanded, but it, it will be. And it will be send blasted with a sand blaster. And it's going to be a two tone color a guitar. Beautiful. It's going to be really, really cool. Very cool, man. Very cool. Not a Star Crusher here. Mahogany body. Uh, flame blister, flame maple veneer. And so, how long, uh, how long does it take you to get the body and then the top glued together? Like, how long you have to wait for the top to uh, to set? Well, usually it's always uh, on a twenty four hour uh, period. Uh, always uh, has to dry overnight for sure. So uh, yeah, whenever, but. Most of the time, it's way longer than that. You know, I, I kind of laminate the tops and the bodies or I glue, I joint the two pieces of our body. And then like, I, maybe I'm gonna cut it uh, like uh, two days after or three gotcha. days, even a week sometimes. So yeah, I like to give the wood some rest when, it, when it's contoured and when, you know, and when I cut neck, especially necks is the most uh, important thing, I think. So every piece is, uh, that's meant to be laminated for a neck, or that's used to be built on next as to rest when it's cut it has some stress that's relieved so you have to see if the wood will move mm -hmm. so you wait and then a week after or two weeks you check and if it didn't move fine if it moved a little bit that's okay you gotta machine it again and it'll be fine and if it's not suitable if it just keeps on moving it's just it's just firewood it's a lot of it's a lot of work yeah man. A lot, a lot. but that's uh, you know it's a string instrument it's under tension all the time and it's it will uh, it will react to the, its environment for mm -hmm. sure. It's even metal moves. <laughs> so so, so yes. Yeah, so what, what are you looking up here? I, I'm seeing you glance up. What's going on? Yeah, there's a lot of cool necks here. Like oh, shit. here, as you can see, you got a beautiful uh, damn flame maple uh, bound uh, neck. That's all nice. the way uh, fretboard and headstock. Still rough, but it's still, it's uh, still beautiful though. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the frets. And needs to be uh, beveled here and after that I will uh, be able to uh, use my jig and shave the back of the neck and continue on the neck thick and the headstock thickness and all the way all this that stuff so it's uh, there's uh, the dots here are made from ebony my all my leftovers of ebony I make dots with them oh shit so that's really that's a cool it's a it's that's a nice cool thing. Man. It's, it's a nice touch I would not be able to figure out how to yep size that up properly <laughs> <laughs> so here's one here's a, here's a special one all right it's a true temperament neck oh shit this is uh for my friend po and a uh, charbonneau guitars artist it's a true temperament Holy fretboard fuck. that's really nice that is crazy how yep. in the fuck yep so it's already Holy like shit. kind of shaped uh, roughly but it's mostly the volute is done uh, the heel of the headstock, so there's some fine tuning, uh, final sanding. Absolutely amazing. It's uh, it's uh, dirty here, but it's gonna be all sanded down, so it's a quilted maple headstock because it goes with a quilted maple uh, maple top. It's a nice headstock too. I like that shape. Yeah, it's uh, it's my friend P.O. So he wanted uh, to design his own headstock, so he decided to. Uh, Very cool. Yep, he Very came nice. up with that, and pretty cool. And, and what's the uh, the um, the neck make? The neck material, uh, the wood is wenge here, and the two stripes here are paduk. Fuck, it's so yeah. nice. Man. And the fun thing about paduk is when you cut it, it smells like donuts. Pastry or 
Oh, listen. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not kind, joking. It my, really smells like donuts. That's my kind of wood, right? There. <laughs> so oh, yeah, wow. we got a couple of necks here that's uh, being prepared here. Same oh, here. Man. Got that's a flame. Uh, it's sorry for the dirt here, but it's the flame ebony. It's got some figure here. Just incredible. It's really, really nice. Holy shit. Yep. So, so listen, what's your favorite, like, aside from seeing a customer like me lose their shit over the nice, nicest guitar I've ever owned in my life, what's, what's your favorite part of the build process? Like, uh, is, it, is it doing the neck? Is it doing the body? Like, what do you like? I would say the neck shaping part. Okay. When I do the volutes with my rasps. Yeah. And then I, I really, it's, and, and then I, when I'm done, it's super sleek and, you know, it's really smooth and... That is a, a really satisfying uh, for me. Do, do, you, do you find that because the neck is so important on a guitar, yeah. do you find that it's like the most intimate part of shape? Like it, that's where the person, that's where you're getting to shape Definitely. it. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh, yeah, because it has to feel right. You know, you have to, to, to have the neck in your hands and it's got to feel right. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's, gotta, <laughs> it's just, this is the neck. That's it's, it. It's like the... No one ever picks up the body and is like... No, but the body oh. is, is big. It's like, a, it's, it's mostly, when you look at the body, I, you look at it more like you look at a picture, I think. Yeah. You look at it because it's bigger. It's like, wow, and the, the, and the, 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 the design of the wood, the grain, yeah. how, it's, how it looks. It's mostly how it looks. The first thing you, when you get a guitar is you look at it and, wow, it's beautiful. That's the first thing yeah. that makes you want to grab it. And That's then you it. grab it and it's, oh, it's heavy. Oh, it's light. Second yeah. thing, and then you you feel the neck. Yeah, yeah. That's the first thing. Just like a car. You just looks nice on the outside. It draws you in. You yep. sit in. You touch your steering wheel. Like, damn. Yep. This feels nice. Yep. Then you punch it, and that's when you fall in love. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So the neck is is the third thing you will notice. But that third thing is the most important. Yeah. If you don't feel it, it's not gonna work. And after that, it's all small things like the bevel on the guitar and how it sits on your. But if the neck feels right, you can get away pretty much with, with the guitar, you know? But it has to be right. Yeah, that's incredible. Everything else can be perfect, but if the neck is not, isn't perfect, it's, it's not going to work. I, th I don't think so. And it's, the other thing that's really satisfying for me is when I put the collar on. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the other part where it's so... When I, you know, when the, you know, the customer wants a certain shades and, and then, and then I, 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 I start to put collar on it and then I contact the... My, my customer, and I look at this, do you like it? And then, oh, maybe a little bit of this or that. And then I start, you know, playing with the colors and then I end up with the final results before spraying. And then the customer says, wow, that's it. <laughs> so that's, that's really an accomplishment for yeah. me. Even if the guitar is not fully done, it's really satisfying. Yeah, that's incredible, man. Well, listen, thanks for, for giving a, a tour of the shop and, and, and sharing some, some of your, your philosophies on and your beliefs on guitar building. I know that you got a lot of things in the works with Charbonneau. You just yep. launched production series. Yep. Right? Some of them are, are being built in Korea, correct? Yeah, but well, all of them. I started the production series here, but it's, it was too much to bear with my custom orders. So I mm -hmm. decided to uh, uh, get in touch with a company that uh, a custom shop uh, in Korea that does uh, magnificent work. And uh, they're, they're, and it by no means this series is cheap. <laughs> this <laughs> is uh, the, the, because the, the, the cheap doesn't rhyme with Charbonneau guitars. Yeah. So uh, that's why I wanted to make sure to deal with the best people in the market. So that factory uh, builds uh, my production series now in Korea. And uh, there are more straightforward, but still pro level instruments. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, it's more destined to the uh, the the market like uh, the, to be in stores. I don't sell them directly. Yeah, you have to go through uh, dealers, certain dealers, to get uh, your hands on them. So so let me ask you a question. What's that like? Because you know we just talked about how shaping the neck, you know, your connection to the instrument is what helps build it. How do you how, how do you feel about something being built overseas? Like, do you, do you feel like you're you're losing a part of like of your essence or or how do you, how do you how do you mix that together you know what i mean uh, um, yeah well yeah that 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 definitely uh, crossed my mind a little bit but once you get your hands on them and then you realize how good they are 
you know, that's kind of a testament of uh, how respectful they are upon your, uh, uh, on your design. So I think that's, you know, we can overcome that feeling when you get that, you know, product in your hands, when you see it's like, wow, they, they did it, they nailed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they got my design. They did a really fine instrument with this. That's really within my standards. So I'm totally fine with that. So when you, when you, when you first got a uh, Korean made Charbonneau production series guitar in your hand, what was your first, what was the first thing that came to your mind? Oh, it was like a definite, uh, definitely a, a wow. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> oh, wow. It was a beautiful. And the, the first run was a all matte finish. It was uh, expertly done. Uh, really nice. Uh, couldn't find anything wrong with uh, anything. It was just perfect. For sure, you have to set them all up because they've been, you know, uh, traveling on a boat for like uh, three weeks. So for sure, yeah. nothing is in tune. And then you have to set it up the way I want them, you know, uh, to be. Yeah. So yes, because I inspect everything. Oh, really? So they come in. Yeah, they come in and it's not like uh, they're coming in and I ship them to the store that bought. So they come pre-order. in and they get, the, they get the Charbonneau touch before. Exactly. You know, I open all the box. Uh, take all the wrapping and check everything, everything, fight to come, every guitar. That's awesome. And I have set them up according to what I think is right. That's awesome. And then they are uh, I didn't know wrapped that. again, That's packed, great. and shipped. Yeah. That's fucking awesome, man. Thank you so much for not only, <laughs> not only oh, bu- yeah. building the nicest fucking guitar I've ever owned in my entire life. Such a work of art, and by the way, it shreds so hard. Oh, it shreds so yeah, hard. Not too bad, eh? <laughs> but also, thanks for talking a bit about what you got going on. So, do you have anything else down coming down the pipe? Any new like uh, models, designs, or are you just trying to meet demand? Well, yeah, a bit of both actually. I'm trying to meet <laughs> demand, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, for the production series, I got another batch of twelve instruments coming. Uh, uh, probably in September. And uh, for the as for new models, maybe a V in the works. Oh shit! Because there's a customer who wants a V, and it's I asked him if I like it and if it's uh, if it looked the way I want it to look. Yeah. I can tweak it, and then I could you know have it as my design, new design. And yeah, he was pretty open with that. So that's great. Yep. And uh, and have, uh, sorry, have you had any requests? I know it's it's a big trend right now, headless models and that kind of stuff. Yep. So. Yep, I have uh, an eight string in the work, uh, lefty uh, headless eight string. It's uh, it's a new model actually. It's the HD uh, model. So yeah, the this is an headless model which uh, I I built a six string for a guy in Florida uh, not too long ago. You can see that on my Facebook. And then there's an eight string. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's great. It's in the works here right now. As a guitar builder. Yep. What's your preference? Headstock, no headstock. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, I don't hate headless at all. Of course. I, I like it. It's different. It's cool. And uh, at the, the one I did, the, the, the six string I did was in drop B. was feeling really, I, I didn't know what to think. At first, I was like, yeah, it's, it was, it's kind of unusual because it's like, a, it was a first. It's a mountain because, like a shows. So. It was, it's a, oh, but the first one I built, actually, the first headless I, I built was the first headless I've ever played on. I never played an Atlas before, so. <laughs> Very cool. Well, listen, man, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, wh- where can we find Charbonneau Guitars? Well, uh, you can find us on uh, Facebook mainly. Uh, I, uh, uh, we advertise on Facebook uh, and on the Charbonneau Guitars page. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to uh, fill out a custom quote form, uh, you can go on our website, charbonneauguitars.net, and uh, just write an email, and that's it. Pro- you know, at the moment, it's a bit, uh, you know, the, 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 there's a work in progress on the website. But, you know, the, the main thing, like our address, phone number, our email, it's all there. So you just go there and, you, and then you write us an email and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Great. Amazing. Thank you so much. Hey, pleasure, man. Cheers. Cheers.